Hi everyone, it's uh, Sarah from Tombale again, and today I'll be running another carving class. Uh, what we're going to make is actually this very small, basic spoon scoop thing. Um, it In the workshop, we actually use a lot of machinery, uh, or at least in the class that I teach, quite a lot of machinery is used when we want to do a spoon. But uh, in this video, or, th or these two videos, uh, I'm going to show you guys that it's actually possible to make one of these using just a very rudimentary uh, home kit that we have here. So, uh, things you're going to need, your chisels, mallet, back saw, uh, markers, markers will be helpful, uh, the bench pack, highly recommended. Um, I also want to keep some uh, loose stock around because it's easy for me to uh, mount the spoon blank later on. And this one might be a bit new to you. It's a gouge chisel. Basically, another chisel with a slightly different shape, cutting edge. You can buy this from us if you're interested in uh, spoon carving or some other, uh, yeah, some other forms of carving. Because it's really helpful in getting uh, some of the curves as opposed to a uh, flat chisel and uh, the blank I'm going to be using is actually just a piece of Maranti you can see it's not very thick at all uh, of course you can go for something a bit thicker your spoon has a bit more of a curve but I don't have very thick blanks with me and uh, I'll show you how we can still get a pretty shapely spoon from such a blank um, if you haven't already watched them I would strongly recommend that you watch the videos on how to read uh, wood grain as well as how to make your own bench pack because the bench pack will be very very helpful in this um, in this class and also uh, learning how to understand the, the wood grain would save you a lot of pain yeah so let's uh, get started and this is the setup i use for the uh, backing board that i will be chiseling against You'll notice that all I did was place two hold fast down and a piece of scrap wood in front of it. You don't have to lock anything down. Uh, it really is just in place to protect the blade of the chisel and your hands. Okay, sorry. I uh, already got started earlier, but I forgot to uh, record. So you can see that part of it has been gouged out. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to show you how we start using the main tool called this gouge chisel to kind of empty out the waste in that scoop area. So the gauge chisel is basically like a flat chisel, but it's got um, a curved edge. So same thing, cutting edge and a bevel over here. The cutting edge is what makes the bite into the wood. You see that I just kind of wiggle it around in there. I'm already removing some fibers. If I press hard enough, I could probably leave it uh, sticking out of there. But the bevel is what's gonna drive the the direction of the cut so uh when i start out the first thing that i want to do is actually lay down this this uh rim of the scoop over here this inner circle so i can have something defined that i can later uh continue to deepen the first strike will allow it to bite into the wood and then the next few follows too. Yeah, I don't want to bring it all the way to the end in case it tears out that way. So I'll do it somewhere to the midpoint, slightly more, stop there. And then just flip it around, meet them in the center to terminate the cut. But same idea, just get me. Get your bite first, strike once. 
see I'm just like kind of choking out the material that I cut from the other side pretty easily So this allows me to bulk out that waste in the scoop pretty quickly. Uh, we don't have a very wide stock, so I don't have to remove that much material. But still, is uh, you still do want to go halfway, slightly more. And uh, yeah, I'm going to do it from the side. So I'll be cutting across the grain. But same idea, strike first. Try a little wood. Try a little wood. Okay, let's do it on the other side. And at about this point, I would have quite a, uh, quite a substantial scoop in there. Uh, we can usually tell the rough um, thickness that we have at the base just by pinching it like that. But if you are concerned about like um, uh, the specifics, you can do a thing where... Uh, just grab any form of stationery and then look for the lowest point so I'm using this as my kind of like uh, flat surface square and then using my f my finger I just mark where that point ends I'll bring it to the side and you can take a look at how deep you've <coughs> kind of dug into the wood yeah uh, in this case, it's about, you can see, in there, uh, something like that. So I don't want to make it too much deeper, but I can probably take one more cut from the, from the center. We are still using the gauge chisel, but it's going to be a bit more of a, um, less about bulking out the material like we were doing with the mallet now I'm just going to use like some amount of body weight and uh, just uh, chisels cutting edge and bevel to do the cleaning up of the inside so before you reach this stage you probably want to make sure that you have a roughly even um, surface on the inside if not there's going to be a lot for you to uh, pair in this manner down so if you see what I'm doing same thing I anchor it with the cutting edge push it forward on its bevel meeting somewhere in the center cutting it push it forward on the bevel meet it somewhere in the center 
and you can always move like back and forth between the this method and the method if you find that certain areas were uh, uh just too uneven and there is no point in you paring it down slowly you can if uh that's what you like but it will take a bit more time And I think with regards to safety is that just because this looks different does not mean that it's any less um, hazardous than a uh, flat chisel. So you notice how I am not holding my block like that. I'm trying to cut this way. Uh, I keep my hands behind the blade. And if anything, it's just a bit of support behind the material. It's a bit easier when you're holding the mallet because you're forced to put both hands away but it can be tempting to get carried away and place your hands in front of the blade when just pairing. So you know that I'm trying to go with an attempt, uh, I'm trying to go with a completely carved finish on the inside of this scoop so I will not be sanding on the inside and this is completely possible as long as you um, respect the grain so say I'm going downwards this way and I mustn't be lazy to kind of flip it around to go downhill from the other side or else I'm gonna start getting tail all over the place and there'll be a sweet spot where they kind of meet probably doing at that flat uh, surface. Likewise for the sides, going downhill, meeting in the center. But you notice that I'm not trying to climb up this way as well with my gauss chisel. For the most minor of pairing, right? You can actually just use it the same way that you use a flat chisel. It's just that uh, the material is going to remove uh, is with respect to that curve it has over there. So you'll list that as, as I'm running over a small bump over here. I will be taking out that small bump, but I will create a slight um, scoop where I have done that, if that makes any sense, because of the scoop shape of the chisel yeah so i'm just gonna go ahead, go ahead and do a bit more pairing to clean up the sides and then i'll show you the result. i've got it quite nicely cleaned up up now uh there's still a little bit of um unevenness that i want to pare down but what i'm gonna do next is actually uh just neaten up this rim over here so i don't want to because i don't want to sand you can technically technically sand it down to that round this shape but I'm going to try and get it as um, uh, carved round as I can and you see that one of the things I'm doing now is actually using the uh, using the cutting edge to follow the curve of the rim then follow it up on this side uh, yeah because it's pairing right I don't need as much backing from that backing board so if I can apply a little bit of pressure against it that way I can also use my hand to steady it like this but you know this I'm not I'm really not using a lot of strength so if you want to do this definitely uh, have a good idea of how much force you're applying you don't want your tool flying or your workpiece flying and not being able to uh, control it. Okay. Bit more. Yeah. 
So I'm just using this this curve on the bevel to kind of respect that that uh, slope that we've already created. And uh, that is it for part one. Uh, I'm gonna go on to sawing in the next video. Just look for it in the links probably. I don't know. Yeah. See you guys.